Today is a very special day because I am kicking off the brand new Bedrock Guide Minecraft 1.20 series on my channel. And before we dive in, I do want to go over a couple of different things. I don't want to assume that everybody knows, so just in case you don't, Minecraft has two versions of the game. There is Minecraft Java Edition, which is the original PC version of Minecraft. And then there is Minecraft Bedrock Edition, labeled Minecraft for Windows in the Minecraft launcher. You might notice that they don't actually say Bedrock Edition underneath the logo, but this is the common terminology for the version of Minecraft that's playable on PC, gaming consoles, and mobile devices. This is the version of Minecraft that we will be covering, so go ahead and click play when you're ready. Over the course of the Bedrock Guide, we will cover everything from the basics down to the most technical things that you can think of, to the best of my ability. And we're gonna have a lot of fun building a really cool world at the same time. Before we launch into the world, you might take note that we are playing in survival on the hardest difficulty. With a couple extra settings, we're gonna turn off fire spreads because I do plan on building some things in this world that I don't want to catch on fire. Something to keep in mind if you're a more technical player, there are some drawbacks to turning off this setting when it comes to certain farms, but rest assured, there are ways to work around that and protect your builds at the same time. I'm also gonna bump up the simulation distance to 12 chunks so that we can get the most out of our render and simulation distance. Multiplayer is turned off because this is going to be a solo world. Cheats? Absolutely not. I don't plan on using any resource or behavior packs, at least for the time being, so that everybody can get the same experience from the start, regardless if you're on PC, console, or mobile. And we're also going to leave off experiments. As much as I would love to have experimental cameras, it's just not gonna happen right now. And before we hit that create button, I do want you to know as well, I do have the seed picked out for this world. I've done a little bit of research of the world so that I could figure out my build locations and things like that, but I don't know where the end portal is. So I'm keeping that seed a secret just for the time being, and it'll be revealed at a later date. Okay, I think that's it. Let's go ahead and hit that create button and we are diving in to the bedrock guide. There is something about being in a brand new world that's so nostalgic seeing that sunrise over the horizon and the terror that instantly sets in knowing that as soon as it gets over there the bad things start coming out so before that happens we're gonna go ahead and start gathering some resources if you are brand new to minecraft this is the very first thing you want to do in the game you're gonna want to find a tree doesn't matter what kind of tree find any tree in sight and punch it you need wood to get resources and you need resources to survive that is the overarching goal of our series is to learn how to survive in Minecraft. But for the episode goals, we have three in mind. Get tools, get food, and get light. We have the light right now, but that's quickly gonna go away. But let's focus on the tools for the moment. I've just made a crafting table, and in the crafting table, we have a three by three square where we can craft tools and any resources possible in the game. It's absolutely amazing. Get a crafting table. I'm gonna take some oak planks here that I just got from my oak logs, and I'm gonna make some sticks. Normally, I would suggest two main tools to start out with, a wood ax and a wood pickaxe, but we have lucked out in this seed. There was a whole bunch of stone around here, so we're actually just gonna skip ahead a little bit. If you don't have stone available, go ahead and get that wood ax, but for now, wooden pickaxe, that's all we're gonna need to get started. I'm gonna roll over here and I'm just gonna mine out a few pieces of stone and we're gonna jump ahead in the game within the first few minutes. And I absolutely love this. It's gonna get us situated a little bit quicker. But again, if you're not so lucky to have found a patch of stone on the surface right at spawn, then you might have to wait a little bit. Either way, get some tools and upgrade them as fast as you can. I'm gonna go for a stone pickaxe and a stone ax. As you progress through the game, you're going to find more materials that will allow your tools to last longer and work faster. So the fact that we can skip past wood tools right away at the very beginning of the game, I'm not mad about it. For the moment, we're actually good on tools, but we're not good on food. Thankfully, I've seen a few food sources wandering around this area. Oh, hey there, Mr. Cow. If we take our brand new stone ax and and give the cow a couple of taps, we might get a few things. Some beef and some leather. Both are very useful. In Minecraft, there are also pigs and there are chickens. And we can also find sheep. Sheep are okay for a food source, but the more important resource this early in the game is their wool. Now that I have tools and a food source, I need some light. We're about halfway through the Minecraft day and we haven't got a whole lot accomplished just yet. 
In order to get light, you can do a few different things. If you get so lucky as me, you might find some coal in the world. But if you're not so lucky, we will talk in another episode about where to find this resource because it is highly valuable and needed to survive. Light is hugely important in the game because it keeps the monsters away at night. I can put some sticks and some coal into my crafting interface and create some torches. And as long as I place these torches down, semi close to where I want to be, nothing bad can spawn as long as there is light. Now, something could spawn over there and find its way over here. The light's not gonna keep them away, but it will prevent any spawns from happening anywhere the light touches. A Minecraft day lasts for 20 minutes. You've got 10 minutes of daylight and 10 minutes of darkness. Because we are already probably seven minutes into the Minecraft day, we don't have long, but as you can see, we don't have enough resources to build anything. So we really only have three options at this point. We can dig a hole in the ground and just wait there for the night to pass. I can find a couple more sheep to get enough wool to make a bed. Or if you look around hard enough, you might find something that I'm seeing out there on the horizon. I'm a little scared right now because the moon is coming up. The monsters are about to spawn and we are not close enough to that village over there to get there before dark but we're gonna make a run for it. I'm not gonna lie, in my preparations for this series, I thought there was a village closer. <laughs> I think it might be over here somewhere, but I don't know. I can't find it. So we're gonna make a break for it. As soon as that sun falls below the horizon, we're gonna see some zombies. We're gonna see some skeletons. We're gonna see some creepers and spiders and all the things you just don't wanna run into. There they are right there. I am unprotected at this point. I am very hungry. So I'm gonna stop for just a moment. We're gonna light this up just to be safe and I'm gonna eat. You may notice that you have a health bar and a hunger bar at the bottom of your screen. Your health bar will deplete when you take fall damage or when you get hit by one of the monsters. So just be careful. You also will not be able to replenish your health if your hunger bar falls too low. So it's important to balance your health and your hunger to make sure that you stay alive. Oh, those are baby zombie villagers. We gotta run because they're very fast. And there's a skeleton. He's gonna start shooting at me. Let's get inside one of these houses as fast as possible because there are beds inside of a village. We don't have to craft one. They're ready made for us. I think we're safe. What? Oh no! Let's get this guy because we want to protect the village. We don't want any of our villagers to get hurt. Leave him alone. Don't bother my friend. Okay, we're going to break into this house. We're going to kick this guy out of his bed and we're going to sleep the night away. And the morning will come. You might start noticing if there are any bad guys around. The zombies and the skeletons will burn in the daylight so they will take care of themselves. It is important to note that creepers, they do not burn in the daylight and they get so close and so happy to see you that they get so excited and explode. So just don't be in the blast radius if that happens. Be careful of these guys. Circling back to food for a moment, raw meat is not the best way to live. But if you do find a village, a lot of times they have very useful crops and these farmers are gonna go ahead and replant this stuff, but I'm gonna go ahead and steal it before he can. Go ahead. You're fine. It's always nice to, if you happen to steal from the village, make sure you replant it. It's not necessary, but you don't wanna make these guys mad. They're gonna help you out later in the game. You might also stumble upon a loot chest inside of a village. Inside, you might find some food. Also very helpful and some other valuables. Don't tell these guys, but I'm gonna steal this bed. This is mine, thank you. Now, anywhere that we go in the world, as long as I have this bed on me, if it starts to get dark, I can sleep and cancel all of those monsters from spawning. And that is how we get the most light possible, just completely skipping the night altogether. I think this village is pretty exhausted. I'm gonna go look for the one that I think I know about. And while we're traveling, the great thing about finding crops in a village like that is these carrots, for example, are a great day one or day two food source because you don't have to cook them. And whenever you find a spot to settle down, you can plant them and reproduce as many carrots as you can imagine. Same goes for wheat and potatoes and beetroot, but carrots are actually just the easiest food source on day one. If you get lucky to find one, go ahead and get as many as possible. If you're not lucky enough to find a village on day one or two, there are ways to find some of these crops in the wild. For example, if you go over here and punch grass, you might not get anything the first time or the second time or the third time or the fourth time or the fifth time. Just punch it a lot of times and eventually 
you're gonna find a seed. If you take this seed and plant it, you're gonna get some wheat. Wheat will actually help you out in a number of different ways that we'll talk about in the very next episode when we cover the best food sources in Minecraft in the early game. Again, if you're watching this episode and you're a seasoned Minecraft player, I hope you're here just for the fun and the entertainment and the community because we will get to some more technical things later on in the season. But for anybody that's new, this is really good stuff to know. I'm gonna take a few things from these villages, but for the most part, I'm probably just gonna leave it all alone oh my goodness i did not expect this <laughs> i found diamonds in episode one i am going to make you a promise right now i'm not gonna use this i'm not gonna use this quite yet and i'm not gonna use this quite yet we're gonna take them just for good measure because they're here it would be silly to leave them behind but i promise you we will keep these diamonds as a memory of the first episode and we will never touch them after that the first diamonds that i want to find for tools i want to find legitimately not that that's not legitimate like that's a really cool way to find diamonds and what a nice surprise but i do want to walk you guys through the method of how to find diamonds in the world because diamonds are hugely important to your survival in this game oh no let's get out of here as quick as possible so many things to talk about if you find yourself getting into uh, a little bit of trouble in snow this is powdered snow as opposed to regular snow you will fall through powdered snow and you will freeze to death if you're not careful and look at that it is just flying the day has gone by again we are already down two days and it's time to sleep again but this time we're gonna go ahead and sleep before any of the monsters come out just so we can skip all that unpleasantness oh beautiful morning no zombies no skeletons no problem actually i see a zombie right there how did you get there How'd you get there? I did see a creeper around here, so we're gonna be very careful. Oh, there he is, hi. I'm gonna actually go inside this house right here and we're just gonna sit here and hope that he goes away. And in the meantime, my ax is about to run out and I do kind of want to keep my tools as a memory from episode one. And we're going to keep some special things throughout the series. So I'm going to go ahead and craft a brand new ax to protect myself. And now this one, I don't really care if it breaks. That's fine. Oh, I still hear you. You're right over here. I still hear you. Don't worry. I know you're there. We're going to make a run for it. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. Oh, did you see that? There's another creeper literally right there. Yikes. Hi, buddy. Y Thankfully for me, creepers can't jump. They can't climb. They really can only go up one block at a time like anything else. So we're pretty safe as long as we stay clear of them. I do want to explore these houses just a little bit more to see if there's anything valuable we can take with us. And then we'll head on our way to where we're going to settle down at least for the first stretch of this series. Hi. My goodness. So you just got to see firsthand what happens when a creeper explodes. I am so sorry. Is, was this your house? I'm so sorry. There you go. At least you can get inside now, right? Sorry, guys. Okay, I think that's enough of the village for now. If I'm remembering my directions correctly, the spawn point is over this direction, and I believe my build site is going to be just over this hill. Yes, we're headed the right direction. We actually passed by my build site a little bit earlier in the episode, right at the very beginning on the first day. And here we are. This is where we're going to be building our first little village to get us by until we get enough resources to build something a little bit bigger. And this site is perfect for many reasons. It is a wide open flat space with very little terrain variation. It's going to be easy to build something in this area. We have a beautiful view of the mountain range behind us. There's a ruined nether portal right over there that we may use for our first trip into the nether. And there's another surprise or two in this general area that we'll leave concealed for another episode. And most importantly, we have several locations with water sources. There's the ocean over there. There's a nice little river. I think there's some water right over here. Yeah, there's some water right there, but that's a little bit too far away from where I want to be. So we're going to go ahead and migrate over to this part of the plains biome. And before we end this episode, I'm going to take a minute to get a few things gathered together. And this will be our first place where we camp out really quick. I'm going to create a stone hoe and right next to this water down here. I'm going to right click on the grass and it's going to create farmland. And as long as you're within four blocks of any water source, it will saturate this farmland so that you 
can plant crops here and they will grow and grow and grow. As mentioned earlier in the episode, the things that we need are tools, which we have, a food source, which we have, a source of light, which we also have, and a way to pass the night so that we can completely skip the darkness altogether. I think we're doing pretty good. While I'm waiting on all of these crops and this sugar cane to grow, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and get a little bit organized. We've got a little bit of time. The sun is just coming up. I don't really have a shelter yet. I'm not going to worry about it quite yet. I know some people do that day one. They build little houses, but I'm going to wait until I've got a few more resources before I get into the building phase. We're just not quite there yet. Earlier in the episode, I mentioned that you could punch any tree. It doesn't matter. You can get wood from any type of tree in the game. But the cool thing about 1.20 is that they introduced a brand new tree type to the game. And oh my goodness, is it beautiful. I want to show you the absolute largest cherry tree biome you're ever going to see in any Minecraft world. Are you ready? We're going to get so much wood from this. <laughs> oh my word. One tree. Minecraft, you did me dirty. I'm going to leave that there for now. I'm sure we'll harvest the wood from it at some point and replant a few more trees there because I really do want to explore all of the new features and items to get in the new update, but that's just too perfect to do anything with right now. We got to leave it alone. I'm still waiting on these crops to grow and I'm going to tell you it's going to take a while, but while we're waiting, I want to show you one more quick early game tip that might help you to stay alive just a little bit longer. If you can find some coal and we craft some sticks, we can take sticks, logs, and coal to make a campfire. And if we put this campfire down on the ground, just like that, not only is this a great source of light, you can take raw meat and put it right there on the campfire and it will cook it up for you in a matter of seconds. And it requires no source of fuel at all. That one piece of coal is going to last a lifetime. This is the best way to cook meat in the early game. There's just no way around it. If you happen to be a little short on coal or you don't have any at all, you can always craft a furnace out of eight cobblestone. And don't scream at me in the comment section for doing this. I know there's multiple ways to get charcoal early game, but the simplest way, just take a log here and a log there. It's gonna burn through that log relatively quickly, but it's gonna spit out one charcoal for you. I'm honestly okay sacrificing two logs to get a campfire. Once you've had a little bit of time to settle in, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and get the essentials that you'll need pretty much everywhere you're gonna go. Always good to have a pickaxe, a sword, a shovel, an ax, a decent source of food, and some torches. And with that, it's pretty safe to say we've accomplished all three of our goals today. I've got tools, I've got food, and I've got light. As you can see, the crops are starting to grow. We've got some wheat, we've got some potatoes, the carrots are getting there. I think there's a beetroot in here somewhere. I had one seed and the sugar cane is growing. Everything is going smoothly. And the last thing I wanna do before we call it an episode, I found a blue flower. There's plenty of them around. I'm gonna put it into the crafting table to make some blue dye, and then I'm gonna combine the bed with the blue dye to make a blue bed. And now we really do have the perfect start in Minecraft survival. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like the video and don't forget to comment. I would love to see some suggestions of some topics that you would love to see covered in this season of the Bedrock Guide. Anything is fair game. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you in the next one.